What's the word, y'all? Man, this was supposed to be um, an off day, my low management day, if you will. And, um, well, something came up. <laughs> something came up that I want to talk about. Now, like when I say low, low management, basically it was like me recording the video, so I didn't get to watch like really any basketball until the end of the last game. I don't know what happened in the first three and a half quarters, but I'm here to talk about that last quarter and a half. Leave a like, subscribe if you are new. Um, um, 11 double-digit leads blown by the New Orleans Pelicans. Now, this one might be probably the biggest blown game I've seen in recent history. This is, um, this is first of all, let me show all of the love to Damian Lillard and the Portland Trailblazers. He uh, continues to keep Terry Stotts' um, job alive, basically. The man is just untouchable. He gave the post-game interview with the with the TNT guys, and it was um, everything this man said was on key. His heart... I don't know how you can be an NBA fan not a fan of Damian Lillard. Simple. I just I just don't understand how you do it. So shout out to Dame. Keep coming up clutches. He always does. Hitting the big time shots. And, and not only just that, trusting his teammates when he needed to trust them. Let's talk about the Pelicans, though, because that's the real story. As much as it was a comeback for the Portland Trailblazers, it was a collapse for the Pelicans. And guess what? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna act like I know the answers. Um, how you can fix the Pelicans in the title, but I really don't. I, I really don't. The main changes I would say when it comes to this Pelicans, and it's not structural. First of all, I'm not telling them what trades they should make. Can you please? I, I feel like I've said this a hundred times in the show. Every time we talk about the Pelicans, can we please get Zion the ball when it matters? Please. They're in the midst of blowing this game, right? It's a 13-0 lead by the Portland Trail, or 13-0 run by the Portland Trail Blazers. You would think that they would give Zion the ball, right? Give him a couple touches. No, they, they revert to this Brandon Ingram isolation game. They revert to this Eric Bledsoe isolation game. And I understand allowing Brandon Ingram to be Brandon Ingram because that's what he's good at. But in these late game situations, every time I see them in a close game, and and, and this is just based on what I feel. I, I don't know if the numbers back me up here. Brandon Ingram just doesn't hit the shots you, you want him to hit in the clutch. I don't know how we can go from Zion basically being dominant. He was walking to the basket every possession. To being like Brandon Ingram, here go the ball, do what you got to do. Now, Brandon Ingram did not have a bad game as far as statistically other than, you know, the missed free throws at the end of things. Like, he was having a good game. But after he missed two to three shots down the stretch, eventually you're like, okay, let's give, let's give Zion the ball. This man is having the best playmaking game of his career so far. How about we let him get a, a, a full head of steam to the basket to kick out to Brandon Ingram? Maybe a catch and shoot is better than him doing turnarounds and doing all those type of things. And then deeper than that, right? A thing you got to do first, Stan Van Gundy, give Zion the goddamn ball. Thing two is work on them defensive assignments. When I came in to, in the third quarter, Alonzo Ball was guarding Damian Lillard, and he was doing a pretty solid job at it. Then in the fourth quarter, the assignment gets switched to Eric Bledsoe? Like, I, I just, it gets switched to Eric Bledsoe. Like, like, I'm not saying Lonzo was clamping up Dame. It's hard to clamp up Dame. The man is unguardable. He was doing a damn better job than what Eric Bledsoe ended up doing. I don't know how we get to that final play and Eric Bledsoe has the assignment over what Lonzo Ball was doing in this game defensively. And it's just Eric Bledsoe, we've said it before, he's just not really here. He's just not here. I don't, I, and you know what? I hope it's that he's not here and he's not, like, done. You know what I'm saying? He had always been a good regular season point guard. All of his years in Milwaukee, you can count on Eric Bledsoe to be a good defensive point guard. He's, he's going to get out and run in transition, all of those type of things. But this year, I feel like every time I'm watching him, I'm, I'm watching 30% of what we saw just like three years ago. So this is this is just a bad, and I mean a bad, bad loss. And what makes it worse is they actually got a good look at the end of it with that full-court pass from Lonzo Ball. They wasted a 17-assist game from Lonzo. I feel like I'm talking about it like a couple days ago. Rudy Gobert had the 26 rebounds or whatever whatever it was, and they ended up losing. This was supposed to be a moment that people on NBA Twitter like, that man Lonzo about to get paid. And sure, they can still say that, but it's just like it means a little bit less because they weren't able to close out this game. The Kill Alexander Walker got to get his hands up, but that's like a – Things like that happen. Of course, you don't want it to happen when it's three seconds left on the clock, but things like that happen. Brandon Ingram missing the two free throws is crazy. Almost a 90% free throw shooter. There's nobody else on this team that you want the ball in their hands going to the free throw line other than him, and he missed both. And the call on Eric Bledsoe? For sure a foul. I don't understand the people on Twitter that are trying to argue that that wasn't a foul. The last two-minute report is going to say that the refs got that right. The refs have a bad track record, especially this season, though, missing calls or calling phantom calls, especially this this week has been a tough one. That one was right. 
because I know I think I think it was Reggie Miller that was saying this or or C Web I don't even remember he was saying like a lot of people believe that the hand of part of the ball and it is but when you hit the hand and it alters the actual shot it's a little bit different I don't know how to explain it 100% a foul 100% a foul you know Damian Lillard do what he got to do he's gonna make those free throws so I yeah Stan Van it's 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 a mixture of coaching it's a mixture of composure. Like they have, they have some veterans on this team. Like, of course, their core players, Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, Zion Williamson, these are younger players. But like, if Eric Bledsoe is going to play big time minutes, you want him to show that veteran leadership. Um, Steve, Steven Adams set out a lot of the the last quarter, and I'm like, why is he not in the game when you really need him? Um, they have some vets here, but I they they don't have that composure. They don't have that composure. Eleven double digit blown leads is crazy at this part of the season. Now teams are going to blow leads. The, the NBA basketball in general is a game a game of runs. But eleven out of I got to see eleven out of their twenty three losses are blown. T- that is crazy, crazy statistic. Crazy, crazy statistic. So that that is what was on my mind. Again, this was supposed to be a low management day for me. Like like um. I planned on not really doing one of these episodes. People were like, Kenny, please talk about how the Celtics shot four free throws. I didn't get to watch this game. It was low management night. I would have to go back and rewatch this. But, like, whenever I see a great change in free throws, I'm not immediately saying that this is rigged. I have to rewatch and see plays that should have been fouls or watch the foul calls that were against the Celtics and see, like, oh, maybe that wasn't a foul. I can't just look at the box score and see four free throws and be like, man, the refs were, were wild. Because sometimes – they're like sometimes one team is just more aggressive now I'm not saying that's the case tonight because again I didn't watch this game but it could be I'm gonna have to go back and rewatch that I did watch the Bulls as I always do um Zach Levine putting up 40 was pretty cool um but more than that I just realized how much or how important Thaddeus Young is to the success of this team and success is in quotation marks because we were better than than we were last year so that is successful for me and that that's that's pretty much it. Those are all the games of basketball I got to watch today. That that's literally it. But I do want to take the time to talk about in these last couple minutes of the show, talk about the weird spot that the NBA finds itself in at this point in, of every NBA season. As a diehard fan, I will most likely watch as many games as I can every single night. But for the casual fan, we're at this point in time where it's after the All Star break, but before the playoffs. And I would just guess that the ratings are down during this period of time. Like, for example, if I wasn't a, a hardcore NBA fan, would I have watched Knicks versus 76ers? Probably not. Would I have watched Heat versus Cavs? Probably not. Like, they, they have this, I don't, they, there's no remedy for it because they've been talking about it for years and years and years. But we're in that great spot where, like, the diehard fans will come in and, and watch basketball regardless of the first game of the season or the the 80-plus game of the season. They don't. We don't care. We're going to watch ball. But the casual fan may not be tuning in. Like, honestly speaking, do you think the casual fan that's not invested in Utah or the Celtics watched the first primetime game? Probably not. Do you think the casual fan got to tune in to that, that collapse between the Pelicans and the Trailblazers? Probably not. Because we're at the point where, of course, every game matters because we're talking about standings. But at the same time, this game between the Timberwolves and the Lakers won't matter in the grand scheme of, of the season. Again, there's no remedy for it, but it's just this is very interesting. It is very, very interesting. I would love to see a graph of like these are the ratings were at the beginning of the season, and we slowly watch it plummet until like the last week where the games really, really matter for like seeding, and then we see a little spike, and then we get to the playoffs and it's back, back up. Okay, I just want to talk about the Pelicans. Um, very, very bad loss. I will go back to rewatch Jazz versus Celtics, and I'll give my opinion probably on Twitter. All right, appreciate y'all. I'm out. Call game. <laughs>